to the great detectives of old time radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. I do want to uh, encourage you, if you've not already, to get your Great Detectives of Old Time Radio t-shirt. You just go to t-shirt.greatdetectives.net if you'd like our regular design. Or we have our Johnny Dollar Anniversary t-shirt. Go to yourstruly.greatdetectives.net. And then we have the ever-reliable Joe Friday Never Said Just the Facts Ma'am t-shirt available at friday.greatdetectives.net. Now, it is time for this week's episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. The original air date, October the 27th, 1953. And the title is The Howard Arnold Matter. WBBM-FM, Chicago. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment presents for your listening enjoyment... John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Hanley Conrad, Johnny. Oh, hello, Mr. Conrad. You employed? No, no, I'm not. All right. Ever heard of a man named Howard Arnold? Big attorney? Represents some of the biggest... Oh, uh... yeah, yeah, that one. I've been reading about him. Attorney for George Castro. That's right. Represents the whole rotten syndicate. Yeah. We insure him for a half million dollars. We wouldn't want anything to happen to him. With that outfit behind him, nothing could. Castro's got more guns than the Army and Navy. I've known Arnold for a long time. Went to law school with him. Called me up the other night. I met him in New York. He's worried. He didn't say it, but I think he's had that falling out with Castro. He wanted to know if I could give him some protection. Why doesn't he go to the police? That's what I asked him, but he said the police wouldn't lift a finger unless he helped expose Castro. Now, what do you want me to do? See him, find out what's on his mind, and stick with him till he feels safe. Okay. Thanks, Johnny. He lives at 944 Sutton Place. I can leave in an hour. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Friends... The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum present these weekly adventures of Johnny Dollar because they know that millions of you enjoy Johnny Dollar. That's true of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, too. It's enjoyed by millions, day in and day out. People find that chewing on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum somehow makes the time pass more pleasantly. Whether you're working, driving, shopping, or just taking things easy, that good, tasty chewing gives you enjoyment and satisfaction. So always keep a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. And whenever you want a refreshing, delicious treat, chew a stick. You'll like it. You really will. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, World Insurance, and Indemnity Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Howard Arnold matter. Expense account item one, $23.55, train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City. Expense account item two, $1.75, cab fare to the hotel, where I registered, went up to my room, and put in a call to the illustrious barrister... Mr. Howard Arnold. Hello? Is Mr. Arnold home? No, he isn't. Who's calling? Johnny Dollar. Oh, yes, Mr. Dollar. Mr. Arnold's not home. May I take a message? Just tell him I'm staying at the Ellsworth Hotel. Maybe I can reach him at his office. No, he's not there. I've been trying to reach him all morning. But I'll certainly tell him you called. Thank you. I unpacked my clothes, had some lunch, and waited around the hotel for the rest of the afternoon. I called Arnold's office twice, but his secretary said she hadn't seen Arnold for several days. Presumed he was out of town on business. 
I went down to the bar, had something cool, and returned to my room. Around 7 o'clock, there was a knock at my door. Mr. Dollar? That's right. Howard Arnold. Oh, come in. My wife told me you'd called. Yes, and I checked with your office several times. I haven't been to my office. I haven't been home, even. Sit down. Thanks. You got a light? Thanks. How much do you know about me, Mr. Dollar? Only what I've read in the paper and what Hanley Conrad told me over the phone. Yeah, I went to law school with Hanley. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. You know about George Castro? Just what I've read. He'd like to kill me. Why? Because I know too much and he's afraid I'll tell someone. I thought you were in pretty solid with Castro. Yeah, solid as anyone gets with him. Our relationship's been getting thinner and thinner for the last year. It finally stretched too tight and snapped. I called Hanley right after it happened. I knew Castro's next step would be to try to liquidate me. Well, I'm here to see that he doesn't. Yeah, Hanley mentioned you, said you were capable. But just to be with me in order to keep Castro's boys away isn't very practical. Well, I didn't think so either. If Castro wants you, it'd take a lot more than me to stop it. But if you think so too, I, uh, why does... I really want you to keep something for me. It's better insurance than 20 efficient bodyguards. I'd have given it to Hanley the other night, but I didn't have it then. That's why I asked him for someone like you, someone who's capable of holding on to something as hot as this is. Just what is it? There's enough in this envelope to send Castro and the rest of the outfit away for a hundred years. Couldn't you just leave me a bundle of dynamite? <laughs> as long as I have this evidence and Castro knows that if anything happened to me, it'd get to the police, I'm safe. Castro knows you've got it? He sure does. I told him by phone a half hour ago. And all you want me to do is hang on to it? That's right. For how long? Until I make some arrangements, I'll let you know. Then what do you want me to do with it? You'll give it back to me. Wherever I am, you'll get it to me. Okay. All right, there you are. Now, if you don't mind, I'll use your phone. My wife's probably worried. I looked at the large envelope and thought about George Castro, the big boy of the outfit. One-fourth man, three-fourths rat. If he ever found out where that envelope was, yours truly could stop planning for his old age. I had dinner, sat in the bar listening to a thin blue piano player for about an hour, then went back up to my room, where I'd hidden the envelope in the dresser. Taped to the bottom of the second drawer. Shut the door. What? It? Shut it. What goes on? Must be a good little boy. I'll get over there and sit down. Okay, okay. Hey, I know you. Good. You're Marty Fleet. One of Castro's happy little trigger men. Hooray for you. Sit down. Now let's have it. Have what? Don't play games, huh? A little while ago, you had a visitor. I did? Yeah, and he left something with you. Let's have it. Have what? You're going to make me go to all the trouble of tearing this joint apart. Not if it's going to make you grouchy. If I spend a lot of time looking for it, what are you going to be doing? You want me to help you? Uh, no, I do better by myself. You're going to tell me where it is? If I knew what you were talking about, I'd be... Okay, okay, so I waste my time and tear the joint apart. Shall I, uh... Turn my back? No, uh, you just take a nap. I finally got my eyes open and found myself alone in the middle of a pile of furniture. The gorilla had departed. And to my amazement, I discovered that he hadn't found the envelope. I called Howard Arnold. Hello? Is Mr. Arnold there? Who's calling? Johnny Dollar. Just a moment. For you, dear, and Mr. Dollar. Hello, Dollar? Well, I think so, but I wouldn't swear to it until I find my head. What's wrong? One of Castro's boys paid me a visit. Did he know I'd been there? Obviously. He wanted the envelope. You didn't give it to him? 
He was persistent in a physical sort of way, but I still have the ugly little thing. That's bad. You're darn right it is. He'll tell Castro he couldn't find it. If Castro even thinks you've got it. Well, let's relieve his mind. You take it back. Well, certainly it's no good you're keeping it if Castro suspects you still might have it. Look, you meet me. Where? Well, certainly not in my house. Castro's probably having me watched. He won't do anything until he knows he can get his hands on that envelope. Well, any place you say, but if you think you're being watched... I'll be careful to lose anyone who might be following you. I know a spot. It's about two miles off the main highway to Connecticut. Well, why all the way out there? Can't we just meet in a gas station or something? No. When you turn over that envelope, I want to be in the safest place possible. But that's a long way. It just doesn't make... Please, Mr. Dollar, this is the way I'd like it. I know what I'm doing. It's deserted, away from everything, and the last place Castro would think of. Okay, if that's the way you want it. I rented a car and drove for a good 40 minutes till I spotted the turnoff. I swung right, hit a stretch of dirt road, drove two miles, and then my light picked up Arnold's car. I pulled up in front of him. Took your time. I've been waiting 20 minutes. I had to come a little farther than you did. I was at the envelope. This place gives me the creeps. Yeah, sure. Here. Both of you hold it right there. What? Oh, no. Don't move a muscle. Dollar, do something. Who's got muscles? Hello, Fleet. Aren't you a long way from home? How's your head? Fleet, wait a minute. Oh, shut up. Hey, Castro's been worried about that envelope. At it all the time, huh, Dollar? Cross my heart and hope to... No. No, I take that back. Can't we make a deal? No, not now. Please, Fleet, I... I'll give you 5000 No. Ten. Sorry. Fifteen. You got 15000 No, but he has. Yeah, fifteen. I'll, I'll make it fifteen. Can't see it. Then what do you want? Well, first, I want to make Mr. Dollar sorry for lying the way he did. Look. So turn around. Now, wait a minute. I said turn around. Go on. The law knows about your fleet. If they find me dead, it won't... You gonna turn around? Okay. Now what? I said I was gonna make you sorry for lying. again, that disgustingly familiar deep black hole. The hole works. I don't know how long I was out this time, but when I slowly pulled myself back, I thought at first that part of the dream had stayed with me. I got to my feet and made my way to the edge of the road. The whole sky seemed to burn with a brilliant yellow light. I looked down in the ravine, and there was Arnold's car, resting on its side where it had rolled, the flames roaring up around it the charred arm of a man hanging out of the window. Friends, this coming Friday or Saturday evening, you'll probably have a lot of youngsters ringing your doorbell and calling out tricks or treats. Well... Here's a suggestion that'll make a real hit with those youngsters and give you a lot of Halloween fun, too. Make your treat Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Kids love chewing gum, and they really appreciate it when you give them sticks or packages of Wrigley's Spearmint. It's a wholesome, healthful treat, too, and it's inexpensive. You can treat a whole army of little goblins and spooks without running up a big cost or going to a lot of trouble. So, when you go to the store, get some packages or a box of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. You'll agree, it's a perfect treat for Halloween. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. I made it back to the road and flagged a car that drove me to a phone. I called the police and the fire department. Forty minutes later, the fire department arrived, and the wagon hauled what was left of Arnold down to the morgue. 
I explained what had happened to a Lieutenant David of homicide, then we drove back to the station where I made a statement. I'm having Castro picked up now. Got a call out on Marty Fleet, too. I still can't figure how Fleet got out on that road, Lieutenant. Who followed Arnold? No, he couldn't have. Fleet worked me over and took my room apart. And when I woke up, he was gone. All in all, I was out for about ten minutes. Yeah. Arnold lives a good thirty minutes from my hotel. When I arrived, Arnold said he'd been waiting twenty minutes. Uh-huh. It would be impossible for Fleet to tail Arnold, then. Unless he had wings. Ever think he might have waited around, tailed you? No, he was already there when I arrived. Maybe somebody could have told him. Well, who? How do I know? Maybe Arnold told his wife and she said something. She's down in the morgue now, making an identification on the body. Yeah? We've got George Castro downstairs. Well, hold him. You got Castro downstairs. Yeah, I heard. I want to talk to him. Senator? Yeah. It's Arnold's outside. She identified him? Yeah. Said the body was Arnold, all right. Pretty hard to tell, but the ring and the watch clinched it. She's feeling pretty bad. Well, bring her in. Yes, yeah, sir. Now, come in, Mrs. Arnold. This is Mr. Dollar. How do you do? Hello. Now, sit down, please. Thank you. Now, uh, I'll try to make this as brief as possible. I'd appreciate it. I understand you identified the body. Yes, it was Howard. You could tell. I'm certain. That was the watch and the ring. They belonged to Howard. Did you know your husband was going to meet Mr. Dollar before he was killed? No. He didn't say where he was going. He'd been acting very strangely for the past few weeks. Did he tell you he'd been to see me earlier today? No. I didn't even know he knew you. Well, do you know why anyone would want to kill him? Lieutenant, you know who my husband was. What he did, the people he represented. See them. (sighs) All right, Mrs. Arnold. I'll have someone take you home. Thank you, but I have my own car. Well, if you don't feel well... I'm all right. Nice meeting you, Mr. Dell. Goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, she's taking it pretty good. Uh-huh. Uh, you wanted to talk to George Castro. Yeah. Yes, Lieutenant. Hey, send in George Castro. All right. I think we'll be able to hold Mr. Castro for a while this time. One thing really bothers me. What? Why didn't Fleet kill me? Just knock me out. Kill Arnold, run him off a cliff. Something really out of place in this one. Here's Castro, Lieutenant. Well, how are you, Lieutenant? Sit down, Castro. Are you going to introduce me? If it's important to you, the name is Dollar. Okay. (laughs) Now, what's this all about? Howard Arnold was killed a couple of hours ago. Huh? You don't say. Shot. Piled in his car and run off a cliff. Caused quite a fire. Oh, such a shame. (laughs) Well, don't look at me. It's all right, Castro. We've got strong stomachs. This one of your cops, David? No, but I agree with him. That's too bad, because I don't like him. So, uh, I guess I don't like you either. I'm getting all choked up. That might be arranged, too. Listen, Castro, you keep your mouth shut until I ask you a question. You may throw a lot of weight around this town, but you're on a diet when you're in this office. One of your boys killed Arnold. I doubt that. Marty Fleet, and I'll swear to it in court. Fleet, huh? Who pushed your face around, funny man? Fleet, on your orders. I don't even know you. You sent Fleet to find something that Arnold had given to me. Something that could put you away for a hundred years. Really? You want to know something? I don't think Arnold had anything like that. Fleet said you sent him. Ah, that's pretty weak, funny man. Let's see how weak it is when I test you. Look, boys, you're not playing with no punk kid. Now, you look. Your boy Fleet came into my office, drew a gun on me, worked me over because he said you sent him. Howard Arnold told me he was afraid you were going to have him killed. Tonight I met Arnold and Fleet showed up with his gun again. He put me to sleep and when I... Yeah. Yeah, go on. What is it? Huh? I just thought of something. Castro, you say you had nothing to do with it. That's what I said. And tell me where I can find Fleet. Oh, don't get me started laughing. I'm too tired. Okay, then hang. This guy's got a sense of humor, Lieutenant. You should have him on the force with the rest of your funny cops. I don't think it's so funny, Castro. 
He's just telling you the truth. I'm going to hold you this time. There's not going to be any writ. Huh? <laughs> you making any book on that? I'm even giving odds. I got more than one lawyer. Yeah, and both of them have already seen Judge Phillips. You're not going to get a writ from anyone. The pressure's on. Fleet's your boy and everybody knows it. The DA's got an election coming up and the papers have been yelling for your scalp. Oh, stop it. Even if your lawyers show up with a writ, you're not going to be here. I'll move you to every jail in this district and I'll keep moving you. I'm going to nail you to the wall until you're convicted. Ah, go ahead. I had nothing to do with this. Then tell us where we can find Fleet. Ah, go on, Castro. If you had nothing to do with it, tell us. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can find him over on 64th Street. The Alton Arms. I'll check it. Can I go now? Not till I check it. While you're doing that, I want to go over and talk to Mrs. Arnold. What do you got? Just a hunch. Yes? Oh. I'd like to talk to you, if I may, Mrs. Arnold. I really don't feel much like discussing anything, Mr. Dollar. This is pretty important. All right. Come in. Sorry I have to disturb you. So am I. But if it's important... Well, you want to get your husband's killer, don't you? Certainly. We can go in here. You know, this happened so suddenly, it's, it's hard to really believe it. Now, Mr. Dollar, how can I help? Well, I'd like to know a few things about your husband. He, uh, he provided for you, didn't he? Yes, but I don't see how that can be of any importance. Well, I just want to know a few things. Your husband made quite a bit of money, didn't he? Yes. You uh, got along? You were happy? Very. You know, there's something awfully funny about this killing. What do you mean? Do you mind if I smoke? No. Please go right ahead. Oh, thanks. Would you like one? No, thank you. What did you mean? That there's something awfully funny about my husband's death. Well, a man named Fleet is supposed to have done it. Works for George Castro. My husband was always afraid of Castro. This Fleet came to my room at the hotel. Said he was working for Castro. Wanted some evidence your husband gave me in an envelope. Fleet knocked me unconscious and then, for a professional hoodlum, did a remarkably poor job of searching. Why haven't the police picked him up? Well, they're looking for him, but I doubt if they find him. Why not? Why won't they find him? He met your husband and me out in the road. Knocked me unconscious again. Then when I awoke, it looked like he'd killed your husband and shoved the car over the cliff. Oh, please. Can't this wait until tomorrow? I think you can help me. But I don't know what you're getting at. Well, Fleet couldn't have followed me because he was already out there. And he couldn't have followed your husband because there wasn't enough time. Somebody told him where we were going to meet. He had time to get there, but not to follow us. Now, Fleet knew that I knew him, could identify him. Why didn't he kill me? I don't know. And I don't know what you're getting at. Now, if you don't One mind... more question, Mrs. Arnold. Yes? When I called your husband this afternoon, I talked to you, didn't I? Yes. At the station, you said you didn't even know your husband knew me. That's right. But when I told you my name over the phone, you knew who I was. Well, I didn't know such thing. Oh, I'm afraid you did. You said, oh, yes, Mr. Dollar. The first time I called. Well, that's not so unusual. My husband has a great many clients. It was just a matter of diplomacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I think, Mrs. Arnold? I'm really not interested in what you think, Mr. Dollar. I'd like you to leave. I think someone wanted me to identify Fleet as your husband's killer. I don't think Fleet killed your husband. Well, someone certainly did. I think someone else wanted the police to think George Castro was behind it. Might even have hired Fleet... Unknown to Castro. Told Fleet to be sure and tell me he was doing the job for Castro. How can I possibly help with all this? Your husband wanted me to hold the evidence until he could make some arrangements. What kind of arrangements? How should I know? He was safe as long as the evidence was safe. Castro wouldn't do anything. Arnold could have put the envelope in a safety deposit vault with instructions to have the police open it in case of his death. Mr. Dollar. Instead, your husband gave me the envelope. Said he'd take it back when he'd made arrangements. Now, how could that help him? 
I don't know. He couldn't hide, go to another country. He knew you can't run away from a man like Castro. And if he ever had the evidence on him, Castro would kill him in a minute. All right. You've said what you had to say. No, not quite. You know what I think? I think the arrangements had already been made. I think the best way for your husband to escape Castro was to have himself killed. You're insane. If he was dead, you'd have all his money and a half a million more in insurance. Get out of here. But he isn't dead at all, is he? The man in that car was fleet. Get out. Your husband leaves the country. Everyone thinks he's dead. Castro stops looking for him. And after you collect the money, you meet him. Get out. Get out. Howard. Well, hello, Mr. Arnold. You don't even look singed. And what a lovely gun. I didn't credit you with this much sense, Dollar. Howard, what are we going to do? We're going to do just as we planned, with one slight change. Your car's in front, isn't it, Dollar? Yeah? Get our car, Beth. You're going to follow us. Where? Get the car. Fleet was the body in the burning car? Yes. You hired him to throw the blame on Castro? Of course. You're really a pretty messy guy, Arnold. You won't have to worry about it long. The police know I came here. They're going to wonder who killed me. What's the matter with Castro? Uh Uh-uh. He's sitting in the lieutenant's office right now. He has so many efficient assassins. Let's go. Okay. Howard! You just follow us. All right, Dollar. Over to your car. You drive. Howard! What? There's a car coming up the drive. Howard! Look at that nice squad car! What's going on? Oh, hi, Lieutenant. You've met Mr. Howard Arnold? Holy! He's alive! Yeah, but slightly unconscious. Better get them both in the car. Right. Sergeant. Now, what's going on? I'll tell you all about it as soon as we can sit down in some nice, loud saloon. Okay? Well, uh... It's on the expense account. Okay. We picked up the not-so-honorable Mr. Howard Arnold and took him back to the station, along with his weeping wife. I filled in some of the details on the way, and later, after I'd changed my shirt, the lieutenant met me in the bar, and I explained the whole thing from start to finish. Between the start and the finish, I ran up expense account items 3 through 25, $27.75, drinks and dinner for two. Expense account item 26, $49.18, car rental and hotel bill. Item 27, $21.43, train fare and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $123.66. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a refreshing, delicious treat you can enjoy just about any time. Chew a few sticks of Wrigley's Spearmint during the day and see how the good chewing helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. The lively, full-bodied flavor of Wrigley's Spearmint cools your mouth, freshens your taste, and sweetens your breath. The chewing itself gives you a nice little boost, helps you keep going at your best. Millions of people get real chewing enjoyment out of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. And we know that you'll enjoy it, too. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. And remember, Halloween is coming, so be sure to have plenty of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum on hand for the youngsters who come calling for tricks or treats. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were David Young, Jeanette Nolan, John McIntyre, Hi Averback, Frank Nelson, and Bill Conrad. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle.
The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network. Welcome back. Well, this was a fun episode. Uh, there were some really good parts I, in terms of the humor. I loved when Johnny offered to help the thug in searching his apartment. In a way, I think that some of these episodes really point to maybe the idea of the type of series that Johnny Dollar was intended to be. Because it's trying to have this sort of element of humor that was present in the Russell era, but I think it's better executed here. Even the expense account had that feel of uh, what they were going for with him padding it out with those drink orders. Although that was not necessarily the wisest thing. He had gotten hit twice over the head so hard he was knocked unconscious within a 24-hour period, likely causing a concussion. What's the first thing you do? How about I go out and drink copious amounts of alcohol? Oh, that 1950s logic. Oh, I guess if you get hit twice on the head in that short period of time, knocked unconscious, and you remain as lucid as Johnny is in this episode, you're kind of basically a cartoon character at that point anyway. All right, well, I do want to go ahead and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Elise, Patreon supporter since December of 2020, currently supporting the show at the Shamus level of $4 or more per month. Again, thanks so much for your support, Elise. And that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this podcast, please be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. We'll be back next Friday with another episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. But coming up tomorrow, we check in with Ranger Jace Pearson for Tales of the Texas Rangers, where... You want any more toast, Jim? Nope. All I want is another cup of coffee. I'll get it myself. Why don't you sit down and eat? Well, I would if I could get that boy to the table. Robert? Robert! I'm coming, Ma. You've been saying that for half an hour. Your eggs are getting cold and we'll be late for church. All right, all right. And never mind that all right business. When your mother called you, you just come a-running. Gee whiz, Pa, I got a word for face, don't I? I'll be right there. Well, see the jar. you'll go without your breakfast. Now, you come sit down, Hattie. No need of your stomach being empty. Just coffee will do for me. Seems like the older a boy gets, the harder it is to get him out of bed in the morning. What time did he get in last night? After 11. Him and Sadie Lewis went to the picture show. I told him I wanted him home at 10 o'clock nights. Oh, Jim, it was Saturday night. He goes to school all week. Well, school will soon be over. He'll be working with me in the store all summer. Maybe he won't feel much like staying out half the night when he's been on his feet all day. Look at the time. Robert! I'm here, Pa. I'm here. Well, it's about time. Get your breakfast, but the eggs will be like rubber. I don't want anything to eat. I'm not hungry. Well, why didn't you say so before your ma wasted her time and the food? You gotta eat something. I'll have breakfast when we get back from church. Sure, that'll be fine. You can make more work for your ma that way. Gee, pa, I just don't feel hungry now. Oh, leave him alone, Jim. I'll get him something later. I'll just put the dishes in to soak. You two want to get out of my way? Why don't you go next door and tell Mr. Driscoll we're about ready to leave? Ah, is he riding with us again? Yes, he's riding with us again, so stop sulking about it. Come on. You ought to be glad to have your teacher for a neighbor. You wouldn't be at the head of your graduating class if it weren't for his helping you. I see enough of him in school without seeing him Sunday, too. Yeah, well, when you get away to college in the fall, you might be wishing you had somebody like him close by to give you a hand. Ring the bell. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.